Hey guys, it's Steve. Today we're going to talk about DNS and I'm going to get into it a little bit so you can understand what DNS is if you don't really know what it is. Lately we've had some some classes here on the Guru Brew 2 about uh, intro to port forwarding and static and IP addresses and talk like that. And I realized that I really need to talk about DNS as well to tie the package more together because you have to know one before you can know the other and they do work together so that's why I decided to do an introduction to DNS. Now this is just in the broad sense there's very specialized fields within DNS there's internal DNS and there's external and what I mean by external would be the internet, the web itself, and then internal, of course, would be your local area network. Both of these work with DNS, and it gets very complicated, but I'm going to try to simplify it so that you can at least grasp an idea of what it is and what it's used for. So DNS stands for Domain Name System and it was developed in about 1983 from the University of California when uh, it was needed for a project and it's really been the standard ever since. Um, certain things have changed but the basic idea and practices remain. Without DNS, everything would still have to be in numbers. Instead of calling up gurubrewshow.com website by typing that in, you would have to type in like a phone number, an address, a 192.168.154, or you know some number in that length um, of numbers. And that gets very complicated to remember all those numbers. And just like a phone book, you can look up the name of the person and then the phone number. And as humans, it's easier to remember a name than it is a number because numerics aren't really easily remembered except for certain numbers to humans. But names for some reason are. So I'm on my computer here and I wanted to demonstrate IP numbers belonging to domain names through DNS. I'm here at IPLookup.net. Now I'll leave a link in the description. But uh, if you put in a domain name in the search box right here, such as weather.com, okay, and I hit enter, what happens is it turns that name, that domain name weather.com, into an IP address. And the IP address to weather.com is 96, 8, 80, and 132. And I can actually copy that number and put it in a web browser. Let's go ahead and open up a new web browser, HTTP, so it knows I'm trying to get out. And put in that uh, number, the IP number there. And if I hit enter, it takes me to weather.com. So as you can see, the computer doesn't need the weather.com at all. It needs the IP number. So that's what I try to demonstrate here. So if you wanted to type in, let's try another one here. Let's type in cnn.com. Copy that number. Let's go to a web page here and we're just going to HTTP colon there we go. And there we are. We're at CNN.com. So in order for this lookup to work, it had to rely on a DNS server. So that was a little demonstration. So really, DNS just um, converts a name to a number, an IP number that the computer can understand. And as far as computers in your local area network, even though we may have them named like Steve's computer, there's the print server, there's the web server, there's Steve's computer over there. 
that's just for us, but there is a number associated with that computer that is stored in the DNS server. And actually, all home users that have a router, just about everyone's going to have a router of some type in their home, actually contains a small DNS server and it does this translation for us. So the computer knows Steve's computer as 205-65-40-254. And all we have to remember is Steve's computer instead of that number. In the web world, instead of google.com, it might be 102.168.134.12. So you can see where DNS is a reference to a number, and that's all it is. Now, it has mechanics in working to do that conversion, and there's a whole infrastructure that's built to handle the massive amount of DNS names that are in there. Every registered name has a DNS number associated with it, so you can imagine how many trillions of numbers that is. Now, inside your local area network, they're just that. They don't go outside the network. And usually they start with 192, 168.1, and then whatever computer it is. Whereas in the outside world, zones or regions of the country are broken down into numbers to segment them, kind of like an area code and a number. Anyway, that's beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to enlighten you what DNS is and really how it works. If I type in the word google.com into my web browser, the first thing that happens is the computer silently goes out to a DNS server. It gets the number for um, google.com, the IP number, and then it returns to me and it calls the page it is exactly how it works. And these DNS numbers um, change because, you know, um, there's always names being bought and sold and changed. So when you buy a name, if you go to godaddy.com and buy yourself a registered domain name, like uh, test.com, you have to associate it a IP number to the web server that's going to be talking to that so that when somebody calls test.com it knows the IP to go to. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. I think that's enough information about DNS. Just know that it's a reference tool that looks up normal names and translates them into IP numbers that the computer can understand. And maybe we'll have more in-depth classes of IPs and domains and that sort of thing. So leave comments or questions below and we'll see you next time. Later. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please leave us a thumbs up and a comment if you wish. If you have your own question that you would like answered, please head over to the GuruBrewShow.com website, click on the Ask a Tech link and leave a question and maybe we'll answer it in an upcoming show. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.